Police detained more than 4,300 people across Russia on Sunday at protests against President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. That's according to an independent protest monitoring group, which said it had documented the detention of at least 4,366 people in 56 different cities across the country. Video obtained by Reuters showed dozens of protesters in Yekaterinburg being detained on Sunday, and one protester there was shown being beaten with a baton and kicked on the ground by police in riot gear. The video showed numerous protesters, some elderly, being escorted onto buses by security forces. Russia's interior ministry said earlier that police had detained around 3,500 people, including 1,700 in Moscow, 750 in St. Petersburg, and 1,061 in other cities. The Interior Ministry also said 5,200 people had taken part in the protests. Some Russian state-controlled media carried short reports about Sunday's protests, but they did not feature high in news bulletins. The last Russian protests with a similar number of arrests were in January of last year, when thousands demanded the release of opposition leader Alexei Navalny after he was arrested upon returning from Germany where he had been recovering from being poisoned with a nerve agent. Navalny had called for anti-war protests on Sunday across Russia and the rest of the world. Protesters gathered at Parliament Square in London on Sunday and outside the White House in Washington, D.C., as well as in Mexico City, New Delhi, Istanbul, Budapest, Belgrade, and Brussels. And residents of some Ukrainian towns and cities occupied by Russian forces also took to the streets in protest. They are among the youngest forced to flee in what the United Nations calls the worst humanitarian crisis in Europe since World War II. More than 200 children evacuated an orphanage in southeastern Ukraine over the weekend as Russian troops attacked a nearby nuclear power plant. The children, ranging from toddlers to teenagers, arrived in the western city of Lviv after a 24-hour train ride with orphanage staffers, including a very emotional director. My heart is being torn apart. I'm sorry, it is tough. When families are separated, it is very hard. I'm sorry, I simply lack the words, and I feel so sorry for these children. They are so young. I don't understand why the Russian people cannot believe that we are being bombarded, that we and our children are being killed. As night fell and the temperature plunged, the children waited patiently on the platform at Lviv, none of them crying or complaining. 16-year-old Vladimir Kovtun said he finally felt safe. It is terrifying to stay in Zaporizhia when the air raid sirens are going off and we must constantly hide in the basement. As snow began to fall, they boarded buses bound for their new home in neighboring Poland, where dozens of other orphans from Kyiv, Odessa and Kharkiv are already being housed in places such as the Osa Hotel in Warsaw, which has been repurposed for refugees. Conference rooms were turned into makeshift dormitories for around 700 children who can stay as long as they need help, a hotel executive said. One woman overseeing the children said she was being barraged with questions from them about when the situation will end, adding, quote, they are afraid and we are afraid. We don't have any answers for them. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, what will happen in an hour. As of Sunday, the civilian death toll since Moscow launched its invasion of Ukraine on February 24th stood at 364, including more than 20 children, according to the United Nations, with hundreds more injured. There's only so much I can say given privacy considerations uh, at this point. Let me just say more generally, uh, whenever an American is detained anywhere in the world, uh, we of course stand ready to provide every possible assistance. We have an embassy team that's working on the cases of, uh, of other Americans uh, who are detained uh, in Russia. We're doing everything we can to see to it that their rights are upheld and respected. From my perspective, um, in times like these, it's important that we maintain uh, our uh, diplomatic contacts, uh, that we uh, maintain um, the uh, diplomatic support, uh, particularly support that we can provide to uh, Americans who may need it, 
Uh, and so that's what, uh, that's what I'm focused on doing. We will not forgive the destroyed houses. We will not forgive the missile that our air defense shot down over Okhmadyet today, and more than 500 other such missiles that hit our land, all over Ukraine, hit our people and children. We will not forgive the shooting of unarmed people, destruction of our infrastructure. We will not forgive. Hundreds and thousands of victims, thousands and thousands suffering, and God will not forgive. Not today, not tomorrow, never. And instead of forgiveness, there will be a day of judgment. Сотні, сотні жертв. Російським військовим ще ніби замало того, що вони вже на. It seems everything Russian servicemen have already done is still not enough for them. Not enough ruined destinies, mutilated lives. They want to kill even more. Tomorrow, Russia has officially announced the shelling of our territory, our enterprises, defense complex. Most were built decades ago by the Soviet government, built in cities. And now they are in the middle of an ordinary urban environment. Thousands of people work there. Hundreds of thousands live nearby. This is murder, deliberate murder. And I have not heard a reaction from any world leader today, from any Western politician, reaction to this announcement. The audacity of the aggressor is a clear signal to the West that sanctions against Russia are not enough because they didn't understand, did not feel, they did not see that the world is really determined, really determined to stop this war. You will not hide from this reality. You will not hide from new murders in Ukraine.